a slight change of location for this post. Uh, this, in case you're wondering, is what a dressing room looks like in London's glamorous West End. I'm here to talk about this book, The Machine by James Smythe. First of all, publishers, take note. If you want people to talk about your books, give them a lovely cover like this one. I can't tell you how many times complete strangers looked at this book when I was reading it on the tube or on the train, and I even struck up a conversation with a couple of people who wanted to know more about the book, more about the author. That allowed me to talk to them about it and spread the word about this writer. So take a leaf from this book. Um, James Smythe is a writer of speculative fiction, science fiction. I don't know how best to describe it really. He's great at writing books with a very strong central idea. Uh, I read his previous novel called The Explorer, which was about a journalist selected to document a mission into space for humans to travel further than they'd ever travelled before, and then simply to turn around and come back again. Uh, in the first 50 pages of that book, the entire crew, apart from this journalist, died in various ways, and then with a neat twist at that point in the book, he was able to look at various themes about loneliness, identity, exploration. It's a very, very interesting book, and the kind of science fiction that I would put the film Moon in. Uh, very interesting, almost philosophical rather than being about sort of spaceships and lasers and aliens and all the rest of it. His current novel, The Machine, is very different. It has some science fiction elements. It is set in this country, but in a different time, slightly in the future, after there's been environmental catastrophe. Uh, floods have devastated huge parts of the country. There's a barrage wall that's been erected along the Thames to protect people from any future events. And there's been a rise in temperature as well, and that all helps to create this atmosphere of heat and sweat and claustrophobia throughout the novel. It concerns a woman called Beth, whose husband Vic was a soldier fighting in the Middle East who came back from that conflict suffering terrible nightmares and who lashed out in violence against her. And he wasn't the only one and so the uh, government at the time implemented a program of treatment using the eponymous machine. It was a machine developed, the idea of which was that people would be able to talk about their experiences and the machine would help to remove the bad memories, replace them with others to patch up the gaps, and they would thus be cured. The result of these machines was that people were left almost in a vegetative state. Uh, as they spoke and bad memories were taken away, they were left with nothing. And that's the state in which Vic has been in a home, being looked after by nurses and doctors. Beth's plan is to get hold of one of the early machines to bring her husband home, and to put back the memories that he used to have in the hope that that might bring him back. It's been described as a modern take on the Frankenstein myth, and in her attempts to rebuild her husband, you can see exactly where that comparison comes from. Smythe is brilliant at building atmosphere, and this starts off way before her husband actually comes home with her. Her relationship with this machine is very, very interesting. It's, the machine is a character in this novel as much as she or her husband or indeed anybody else is. Um, it's, it's a scary presence. It's a huge machine. It's foreboding. There's an amazing movie called uh, Demon Seed with Judy Christie in which uh, the wife of a scientist has this weird relationship with a machine that he's been building with artificial intelligence. And I was reminded very much of that. The, the machine has this presence and the line between what is happening while she is awake and asleep and dreaming or not is very, very blurred, so it makes for a very atmospheric read. Um, if I had a criticism, it would be that there are just enough characters in the story to make the story work. This is good in a way because it means the story is very focused, it feels very claustrophobic, but it does at times feel a bit convenient that there are just the right number of people to basically make the plot work. This is a tiny criticism, though, because... Smythe, as I said, builds atmosphere brilliantly. And like the previous book, and like I presume his debut novel, The Testimony, what he does is he writes these great novels of ideas. They have a very simple idea at the centre, and he's able to develop that idea philosophically uh, so that you get to debate lots of things along the way, lots of moral quandaries, lots of human quandaries. And it means that I, uh, again, uh, when I was talking about Patrick Flannery last week, I'm really intrigued to know what he's going to write next. That's why when I've been speaking to people on the tube or the train about this book and trying to describe him as a writer, I've said he's one to watch. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what he writes next. I will certainly be reading it. 
and um, I hope you might give them a chance too. For my next post, I will be looking at some graphic novels. Uh, there's three books, I'm going to do a little roundup. Uh, they're all very, very different, all interesting in different ways, and all gorgeous to look at. So see you soon.